What's up, spectators? Welcome back to an episode of Ace Attorney 6. Here we are behind the stage, and we're examining the area. We already looked at Mr. Hat. There should be still a lot of things to look at, though, so let's go. Look! There are cushions attached to the underside. What are you standing way over there for? Come on over and look. You're not gonna try and push me off, are you? Seriously, Apollo, come on, you'll be fine. You want me to hold your hand? Yes, actually, if you wouldn't mind. Looks like you're right. And Trucy mentioned something about this, didn't she? That a cushion was supposed to absorb the force of impact when Mr. Hat was pulled up. That's a big pulley. Looks like it's connected to one of the winches down below. The dragon set piece must have been hanging from this. Okay. These set pieces look like a rabbit and a moon. Although they kind of look like they could be a duck and a croissant too. What do they look like to you, Apollo? The Grim Reaper, and a guy falling to his death. Come on, let's wrap up this investigation before your imagination catches up with you. Hmm. Okay, what else is there? It looks like Mr. Hat's rigged to this smaller pulley. Let's see, how did it go? After being blown a kiss, Mr. Hat goes wild and... Just as he's about to stab the coffin, he gets pulled up to the catwalk. And the smoke screen was to hide his ascent from the audience's view. Well, I think that about does it for the catwalk. Do you think we missed anything? Nope, uh-uh, didn't miss a single thing. We're all done here, yes siree. I take it you're ready to go down. I think we'd better. I feel a fainting spell coming on. Oh, brother. You don't need me to hold your hand again, do you? Boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. What is this thing? It's a winch. I'm guessing they used it to pull Mr. Hat up. There are two winches, one back there and one up here. Apparently each winch was rigged up to something different. One of them was used to hold up the dragon set piece, while the other was connected to that weird puppet up in the catwalk. I think you mean Mr. Hat. Mm, running out of things here. There's a sign here that says understage. I bet these stairs go to the understage area. Wow, you're so smart, Apollo. Trucy told me she and her fellow magicians call it the abyss. Wonder why? Who knows? Maybe because it's really dark down there or something. I bet they got all kinds of magical goodies stashed away down there. Come on, let's go check it out. The door's locked. The entrance to the abyss is barred to mere mortals like us, huh? Oh well, that's what you call a swing in an abyss. That is so bad. Not even fun to say. Mm -mm -mm. All done? Pretty much, there's just one thing. The door to the understage passage was locked. Any way we can get down there? That place? He locked it up as soon as we police finished our investigation down there. If you want to check it out, you'll have to ask a magician. Well, Trucy's at the detention center, so she can't help us. I guess we'll have to look for somebody else from the show. Okay, and I better get back to my own investigation. See you around!
It's too bad about the understage area, but at least we learned a few things. Like one of your greatest fears. Wasn't talking about that. I meant how all the behind the scenes stuff is set up. We found out there are two winches backstage. Mr. Hat was rigged to the first winch. And the dragon set piece was attached to the other. And both of them were used during the show. Right after the body was discovered, the dragon set piece fell to the stage. And in the chaos that ensued, the culprit could have switched the rubber sword with the real one. So it looks like the best way to prove Trucy's innocence is to identify the real killer. Are you kidding me right now? Obviously. What a complete and utter mess. This is all great. Just great. That right kid is Bush League Small Potatoes. A half-grown has-been. There's somebody on the stage. Wonder who it is and what they're doing. Maybe we should go talk to them. Nope, that's not what I meant to push. Excuse me, are you connected to the show? What, you two got a couple more headaches for me to handle? I got my hands full as it is. I remember this guy. What the heck's going on? They wouldn't even let me in. Me for crying out loud. Oh, Mr. Rettens. There was an accident during the show. An accident? Great, just great. Blah, 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 complaining, complaining. Do you have any idea how much money we're singing? Yes, 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 okay. Shut up, continue. It's that man who's going off with the staff in front of the theater. I ain't never seen you guys before. If I had to guess, I'd say you're not production staff. What's that I spy with my little eye? An attorney's badge. Well, how do you do? I didn't know you fine folks were lawyers. My business card, if you would. Charm to make your acquaintance, I'm sure. Thank you. So you're from the TV station, I take it. Sharp as attack you are. I'm the producer of the TV special. All my idea, by the way. I'm Apollo Justice, Trucy Wright's defense attorney. Trucy Wright's. Ooh, fancy. Well, ain't that a kick in the head? How about you open with that tidbit next time, champ? Okay. What happened to the schmoozy magoo bit? I'm Roger Rettens. Hold the applause and no autographs, kids. I'm on the clock. Apollo, this guy looks really familiar, but I can't quite... Really, kid? Then try this on for size. Hang loose, baby! Hang loose, baby? It's the ratings Raja from Take-Two TV! He's huge! Crazy huge! Like a real famous producer. I've never heard of him. Seriously, man? What kind of cave did you crawl out of? Roger Rettens, the ratings Raja, titan of the TV screen. Still not ringing a bell? You ain't seen my hit Saturday night talk show at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central? No, I can't say that I have. Japan wishes it had three time zones. Or technically the U.S. has four time zones. Because it's got that dumb mountain standard. <laughs> You're blowing my mind, kid. You even know what a TV is? Say it with me. Television. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about the incident? No, no, no. What kind of a comeback is that? Grow some backbone, kid. I basically lobbed that one at you. Now hit me with your best barb. Viewers will love that. 
You gotta sell it. Sell what? Say something funny for the nice people at home. Go on, hit me with hit me with your best shot. My best shot. We're rolling here. Hurry up before they change the channel. Okay, here goes. Talk to the hand. Kapow! Kapow? Really? And why are you pointing all dramatically like we're in court? I don't know, it just seemed like the thing to do. Uh... Uh... Apollo, you must die now. That's going in the cringe reel for sure. I think we can all agree that was a mistake. If I choked any harder, I'd need the Heimlich maneuver. I blame myself, really. Should have known better than to waste good film on a nobody. So, you wanted an exclusive or what? Today's magic show was being broadcast live on TV, wasn't it? And you were the producer, right? That's right. Rising magic star versus old school grammary. It was gonna be wild. We were gonna have viewers vote for their favorite magician during the show. And a loser would have had a really embarrassing prank done to them. It was gold, I tell you, guaranteed ratings. I don't know, it sounds kinda tacky if you ask me. I'm telling you, man, modern viewers eat this stuff up with a spoon, trust me. All we gotta do is serve it up nice and hot. A feast for the eyes. More like junk food for the brain. But that little brat had to go and ruin everything with that accident of hers. Do you have any idea how many times they dragged me over here to prepare for today? He must know this theater pretty well if he came by that often. That gives me an idea. How about this? Mad mindscape of a magical murderess. Closest comrades come clean. Stupidest headline I've ever heard because it's too many words. When could you tell she was about ready to snap? This guy's cruising for a bruising, Apollo. As long as you don't get caught on camera. Yes, I agree. As long as you don't get a call on camera, you can kill him. Truth be told, I'm not surprised about the way things turned out. Magicians are pretty much the dregs of society, am I right? What's that supposed to mean? I thought he was very clear about it. What were you doing at the time of the incident? Shooting a show in the station studio. We had a whole bunch of girls in bikinis wrestle each other before the camera. So you didn't see the accident as it actually happened. That's right. That's why I was shocked when I first got here. So he didn't hear about the accident until he arrived, huh? I'm guessing what you really want to know is whether or not I have an alibi, am I right? My staff at the TV studio can vouch for me. Why not go there and ask them yourself? You can give them my card and they'll let you in. So you have an alibi, huh? Good to know. Magicians are all a bunch of good-for-nothings if you ask me. Con artists and thieves is what they are. They trick people and take their money. Coming from you, that's rich, pal. Magic tricks aren't the same as con jobs, you know. That's right, the people watching never feel like they've been cheated. Lawyers spout hypocritical nonsense. Big surprise there, LOL. And post. Did he just post about us real time? It's just live tweeting, come on now. Those grammaries are all criminals. It's in their blood. Trucy Wright ain't no different. That girl's no good. She may look all sweet and innocent, but she's a stone cold killer. Don't you dare talk about Trucy like that. You don't know the first thing about her. You won't find a sweeter, harder-working girl anywhere, period. 
She's got the wool pulled over your eyes, I see. What in the world are you talking about? You'll see. I'll dig up the dirt and expose the dark heart behind that sweet smile. I'll prove those Grammarie magicians are all a bunch of lowlives. Does he have a grudge against Trucy, or maybe against all of Troop Grammarie? TV is a window to the truth. It's not like that magic stuff with the streetwise charlatans that perform it. It's a shame. A crying shame, I tell you. What was supposed to be a fun, light-hearted program turned into this sorry affair. I'll have to sell it to news outlets all over the world if I'm gonna make my money back. Trucy Wright will make her debut all right. Not as a magician, but as a criminal. What? Calm down. It's my duty to report it. Can't let a tragedy like this happen again now, can I? Even if she gets off somehow, I'll make sure she never works, walks the streets again. I was gonna say, never works the streets again. Working those corners. We won't let that happen. We won't let you do that to her. We're going to prove her innocence in court. Listen to you acting all high and mighty. You're just another money grubber. I know how you lawyers do things. You'll stop at nothing to win. I beg your pardon? If you win your trials, you get fat stacks, right? Is money really all you care about? What's with him, Apollo? Why won't he listen? But enough about you. I'm all about going after Trucy now. I won't stop until she's behind bars. That's how we in the media dish out justice. Before you even get to court, my expose is gonna take you down. Not if I have anything to say about it. Gotta get back to the station. Hang loose, baby! Rocket power and all that. Looks like the prosecution won't be our only opponent this time. But no way are we gonna let that guy have his way either. That's right. Okay, we're done with the stage. Let's go someplace else. I still wish we could check out that understage passage. But what else can we investigate right now? Bum, 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 bum. Return the notebook to Trucy. Well, okay, we can try. She wasn't there last time. She's still not here! Okay, that's a little annoying. We can try going back to the stage. We have to investigate the Penrose Theater from top to bottom. And talk to every single person involved. You're really fired up. Of course, Trucy's entire future depends on this. The agency's entire financial future, too. Okay. What are we missing? We already searched here, but it never hurts to take another look around. So there's no point. This dragon is a lot more handmade than I expected. Yeah, well, I can't tell you how many hours I put into that freaking thing. You made it? Trucy had me help put it together. You know, as her assistant. She has you wrapped around her little finger, doesn't she? Trucy's smile has some kind of magical power that makes it impossible to say no. Ba 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 beep 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 boop ba boop boop Running out of things to look at Oh boy Emma, can I ask you a question? This is the best okay, we have already done this. Ah okay. Hmm. 
We could try moving to the dressing room, and then the, I'll go to the Penrose Theater. Because she did say something about the Penrose Theater, but... Oh, okay. About all that's left to check out is that understage passage. We'll have to try to get one of the staff members to unlock the door. Someone just came into the dressing room. It's probably Bonnie. Bonnie, 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 Bonnie. It's you people again. You came back. I saw you, you know. It's you. The bunny assistant from the show. Oh, yes, that's right. My name's Bonnie DeFam. I remember her talking to us earlier. Performing magic is like walking a tightrope. There's always an element of da danger. Danger. One little mistake can even cost you your life, you know. I wonder if she'll make it across today. And what do you mean by that exactly? Oh, nothing. Now if you'll excuse me. She said some pretty strange things then. I saw you take it. You took something from our dressing room. The... Oh, Bonnie, that teleportation trick you did was amazing. Oh, thank you. But what you did, stealing is... What other kinds of magic tricks can you do? Oh, well, how about this? Ooh. Splendido! Athena, I think Bonnie's trying to say something to us. Thank you, Mr. Thief. I saw you. I saw you take that notebook. Please don't take things from our dressing room. Well, please don't commit murder. So it's true what they say. Thieves really do return to the scene of the crime, don't they? I thought it was just arsonists in real life. Guess that means she really saw us, huh? I bet this looks pretty bad. If you return what you stole right now, I won't call the police. Oh boy. You got it all wrong. We're Trucy's lawyers. She asked us to bring the notebook to her. Trucy's lawyers? I'm sorry I called you thieves. If you really thought we were thieves, why were you still doing tricks for us? I can't help it. Whenever anybody asks, I just can't bring myself to refuse. Does that mean she's a real people person, or that she aims to please a little too hard? <laughs> In that case, can you tell us the secret to your teleportation trick? Well, I don't know if I should. If I keep up the pressure, she just might tell us. I've been dying to know. Leave the poor girl alone. Are you investigating the case? Yes, that's right. I'm Trucy's biggest fan. I just love her to bits. I'll do anything to help her. We appreciate that. In that case, would you mind if we asked you a few questions? You're a magician, right, Bonnie? My specialties are teleportation and this little trick right here. Looks like Mr. Bunny's in a bad mood right now. Or that she messed up. You said you're a big fan of Trucy's, right? Oh yes, I look up to her more than anyone else in the whole world. What about her makes you respect her so much? She's just incredible. Not only is she extremely talented, but she's so cool under pressure and always manages to keep a smile on her face. In spite of all that talent, she still works harder than anybody I know. You couldn't ask for more out of a magician. I'm sensing a shift into hyper fangirl drive. I love the unique way she does her tricks. And how she charms. Okay. Her magic panties. She was impressed. 
many of her shows. And that's why I think Trucy is top class. A real first-rate magician. I see. I think we have a pretty good idea of how much you adore her now. Whoa, was I talking too much? I'm so sorry. I better be careful about when and how I ask her about Trucy. That's why I'll do anything to help Trucy. Mr. Lawyer, you just have to prove her innocence. Don't worry, I plan to do just that. I wish Trucy could see that she has people like Bonnie in her corner rooting for her. You were in the magic show, right? These questions he asks are so stupid sometimes. That's right, I take it you saw my teleportation trick. Yes, it was just wonderful. You move from one place to another in the blink of an eye. I admit it was pretty amazing. I have no idea how you transported yourself over such a distance in just a split second. It must be so fun to be able to do a trick like that. Teleportation looks so cool. It's like a superpower or something. Yeah, my trick is turning some heads in the magic world right now. They're calling it New Miraculous Magic. Some even say it's the real deal. Real magic, huh? I know there must be an explanation, but it sure does look real. I just have to figure out that trick out. I want to do it myself. Oh, you'll never figure it out. I always perform it perfectly. Ah. This feeling. Looks to me like Bonnie's hiding something. So he's rudely going to tell her she's lying. It's messed up. No, what's going on? No, go back. What the hell? Boop, boop, beep. Boop, beep, boop. Beep, 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 ba, beep, boop, beep. I'm waiting. It's, it's going to be the perfectly part. I can already tell. Almost there. Almost there. Wait for the next segment. Okay, now look. What the hell? I totally missed it. Um. Just gonna wash your face for a bit. I'm not seeing it. Alright, one more time. This time I'll try looking at her hand on the hat. Could also be her ears. Oh, there it is. Gotcha. Bonnie, when you said perform it perfectly, your right hand would tremble and move your hat a tiny bit. I even caught a glimpse of the little rabbit hiding underneath. Did you really perform the teleportation trick perfectly this time? Of course, I definitely go that, get that part, right? Mm, okay. What do you mean that part? Wait a minute. Are you saying that you picked the wrong career, loser? Didn't switch the swords or messed up Trucy's escape? Did you maybe make a mistake in the switching swords? I wasn't involved with that part, so how could I make a mistake? Not even I could mess up if I was simply watching. If you were simply watching... I never make any mistakes under any circumstances, that's what I meant. She seemed pretty flustered just now. I bet she did make a mistake somewhere. You might have performed the teleportation trick flawlessly. But what about Trucy's escape trick after? Did you make some kind of mistake during that? Well... Did you? You see... Did you or didn't you? I did. You're absolutely right, Mr. Lawyer. I made a mistake during Trucy's escape trick. I'm sorry I lied. 
I feel like I pulled off a magic trick of my own just trying to get that out of her. So you made a mistake during Trucy's escape trick. Yes, I was in charge of operating Mr. Hack, you see. But I made a huge goof. So, did Trucy explain to you how the escape trick works? Yes, she knew we'd need to know for our investigation, so she shared the secret. After Trucy escaped from the coffin down into the understage passage, Mr. Hat was to be pulled up to the catwalk by a winch. Trucy would then pop up on stage through a trapdoor. I was operating Mr. Hat at the time. But if I flubbed up, where was I supposed to have him- what? But I flubbed up where I was supposed to have him stand. I was supposed to make Mr. Hat stand to the left of the coffin. But I messed up and had him stand to the right by accident. That matches up with what we saw during the show. But then doesn't that mean... Trucy would have ended up popping up on the side opposite Mr. Hat? Yes, she would have if she hadn't done some quick thinking on her feet. She managed to pop up on the right-hand side of the coffin for me, so the audience never even knew a mistake had been made. Way to go, Trucy! But my mistake caused her so much trouble. I think I'd better ask Trucy about this later, too. Oh, by the way, we'd like to investigate the understage passage. Would that be alright? Oh yes, by all means! Anything to help prove Trucy's innocence. I'll unlock it for you. There you are. You got a minute. Mr. Rettens, of course. Not you, Bunny. The lawyers. They're the ones I want to see. You have business with us? I hear you two are from the same agency as Trucy. Is that true? That's right. This is for you, then. Hang loose, baby! A contract between Take-Two TV, the first party, and Trucy Wright, the second party. If, through the fault of the second party, the show must be cancelled in part or in full. The second party will pay three million dollars as compensation to the first party. Three million doll hairs! That's more like it! That shocked reaction, that dopey expression. You'd make a great comedian. Really? I know, I'll put you on my show. We'll get one of those cartoon anvils to fall on your head. Wait a minute. Is this for one of those hidden camera prank shows? You wish? That's an official contract. See for yourselves. You're the lawyers, after all. You should know one when you see one, right? He's right. It's all signed and everything. So stupid, because that's just what insurance is for. So stupid. We're not an insurance company. You better make sure your agency pays what Trucy owes me, in full. Are you kidding me? The right anything agency doesn't have that kind of money. Then I guess you're gonna have to go fishing for some. I can see it now. Craziest catch, legend of the seasick lawyers. Fishing on the high seas? No thanks. What kind of ridiculous, low-down, unfair, one-sided contract is this? Hey, now, there's nothing ridiculous here. All perfectly legit. It's got her signature on it, see? Ark. My boys have gotta see the stupid look on your faces, it's priceless. And post. I'm getting responses already. It's gonna go viral. No! How could he? Bye bye, reputation. Contract added to the court record. You ain't seen nothing yet, baby. I'm gonna drive true grammary and everybody associated with it ugh, into the ground. Serves you right for getting involved with the grammaries. What's 
toughest grudge you have against the Grammaries, anyway. What are you talking about? Stress is making you paranoid, champ. Come on, Bonnie, we have more filming to do. Yes, sir. Excuse me, Mr. Lawyer. And I'll unlock the door to the Understate's Passage for you later. Later, lawyers! Why would Trucy sign a contract like this? And why did all this have to happen when Mr. Wright isn't here? We'll have to come back for the understage later. Let's go hear Trucy's side of the story. Good thinking! Can't let you hit high seas just yet! There must be something we can do. And with that, at 36 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. So stay tuned tomorrow for the next episode, and thanks for watching. Bye bye